Okay guys, this is Mr. Stark. This is what you're gonna need to start with today. We're doing resistive inductive parallel circuits. So you'll need chapter 14 and you'll need the formulas that go with it. So let's turn to the appropriate page. We're gonna start off on page 346. Resistive inductive parallel formulas and there are some on the back as well. Just like last time, I color coded them and wrote all these parallel formulas up on the board. These formulas are not the same ones that were in the series circuit. A lot of them are changed <clears throat> and remodified. I put them up here to help out with this instruction, but you have your sheets in front of you. Next thing you're gonna need certainly is your calculator. And then last, the formula that we're working on today, or the example I should say, is giving us three different things. We have inductive reactants, we have the inductor, which is in parallel with the resistor, we have the value of resistance, and we have total voltage. So, because we're dealing with a parallel circuit, if you remember your parallel rules, voltage is the same everywhere in the circuit. I know that because of this formula and obviously this formula and obviously this formula. So the parallel rules stay the same like we did in series circuits. So now if you're taking a look at what's on the board here, I could put 240 across the resistor and across the inductor. We're gonna do that. So, 240, come across the resistor, 240, and that's a great start because we've actually got two values over there, and that's a heck of a way to start. We could actually solve for all this right now, can we not? And we could solve for all the values across the inductor as well. But I need to show you how to enter this new formula for impedance in the calculator. Now, if you remember way back when, when we were doing parallel circuits, when we were solving for total resistance in a parallel circuit, we dealt with the reciprocal formula. We have a new version of that formula right here. It's on your sheet. You're going to need to find it on your sheet. This is saying in order to solve for impedance, I need the resistance value, which we have. I need the inductive, in, uh, the inductive reactance value, which I have. And how we're going to enter this into the calculator, you got to get your calculator out and be ready to type in exactly as I show you so you don't screw this up. So let's take this formula that I've already put on paper. My value of my resistor is 15, that's why I wrote it there. And I took that from our circuit. The value of my inductive reactance is 20, which I took from the circuit. Now let's put it in the calculator. So it's very tricky, so pay attention. I have to bring up the square root bracket first. So hit second, square. Now I'm gonna enter 15. I'm gonna reciprocal it before I square it. Then I'm gonna hit plus, 20. Reciprocal, square. Equals, this is not our number, because now we have to reciprocal it one last time equals, and that's our number, 12. So if we had to kind of go through this again, second function square, 15 reciprocal squared plus 20 reciprocal square equals reciprocal equals, and there's our 12. So let's put 12 over there for impedance. 
And I'll certainly help you with this online if you just give me a call, email me, I'll show you how to do it again. So our impedance is 12. All right, we're in a good spot now. A good spot to solve. Let's just do the easy one first, right? If I have E and I have R, can I solve for I? Absolutely. E divided by R will give me I. How do I know that? Well, why don't you go look at your ER formula. If I come over here, uh, if I'm looking for IR, <clears throat> which is way over here, IR equals ER divided by R, or E divided by R. And that's on your Ohm's Law. So that's something that we should all know by now. Let's do a double look. E divided by R will give me I. We'll look on your Ohm's Law wheel. If I have I, it's E divided by R. All right, let's do it. 240 divided by 15. Gives me 16 amps. Beautiful. Let's solve for P. Normally when we're solving for P, we do volts times amps, right? Isn't that what we do all the time? Volts times amps. <clears throat> so what's our volts? Our volts in this case is 240 times 16 equals 3,840 watts. That's columns done. Let's come, let's come over to this column. How do I get I when I have E and R? Or XL as what we're referring to. So I could either use Ohm's Law or I could look over for my EL formulas. What does EL equal? Or what does IL equal? So that's kind of how I want you to see things. So let's go to IL equals, where are my ILs? My ILs are right here. IL equals EL divided by inductive reactance. We have these two quantities, let's put them in. Here we go again, 240 divided by 20, which is essentially R, and you get 12. Let's put 12 right there. So far so good. Now let's solve for inductance, which is an L. We know we have one L formula. It's way over here. In this case, we have inductive reactance on our paper, which we know was 20. And we know two times pi times F equals 377 if our frequency is 60 hertz, which it was. Pi is 3.1416, and then two gets multiplied by that, and that's our formula. Let's do 20 divided by 377. 20 divided by 377. 0.053 inductance in Henry's. All right, we're getting there, guys. Now we're gonna solve for VARs. So let's take a look at that column and remember what I taught you in the series circuit. VARs is wattless power. It's synonymous with P or VA, and it can be solved with any Ohm's law pieces like EIR, which we have. So when we're solving for P, we're usually using volts times amps. But if you don't know that, look for something that says VARS equals. Let's go over here. VARS equals volts times amps across the inductor. Or we could take volts squared divided by the inductive reactance. We have that value too. Or we could take 
current squared times inductive reactance. Any one of those formulas will get you there. So let's do the easy one that we're used to doing, which is volts times amps. So let's take 240 times 12, and you end up with 2880. 2880. Okay, the only thing that's left over here is this column. This is essentially E divided by R, because impedance is resistance. So if I put 240 divided by 12, well, let's go do that in the calculator. 240 divided by 12 gives me 20. All right, here we go. 20. Now, the last couple things are pretty easy. We remember how to solve these. VA, in this case, is going to be volts times amps because that's synonymous with power. Volts times amps. So let's do 240 times 20 and we end up with 4,800 watts. Power factor. Let's find our power factor formula. If we come over here and do PF for parallel, it's actually the opposite of series. Before it was R divided by Z, now it's Z divided by R. If we want to use that formula. So let's take Z, which is 12, divided by R, which is 15, and you get 0.8. Remember, power factor has to be represented in a percent. We multiply that 0.8 times 100, and we get 80%. Now we're looking for the angle theta, which is the relationship of voltage and current in a resistive inductive parallel circuit. And what we got to do now is take this decimal number and enter it in like this. Hit second function, hit your cosine button, put in 0.8, and you get 36.86 degrees. 36.8 degrees. That's the angle difference between voltage and current, or how out of phase they are with each other is by 36, almost 37 degrees. Now, keep in mind, you guys, we didn't do anything different other than series circuits. We just applied the parallel rules. But do notice something that's opposite of the series. Remember, current was additive in a parallel circuit, but it doesn't appear to be here because 20 is my total, but I've got 16 here and I've got 12 there. But if we look for the IT formula for parallel circuits, uh, right here, here's where we have to change and square it like we did with a series circuit. And then we'll end up with 20 for the total. So let's verify that while I've got half a minute left on this. Let's go second function, square, and we're gonna put in R squared, else, and then you know, current across the resistor and the inductor. So we're gonna go 16 squared plus 12 squared, equals 20, which is exactly what we have for the total. So very similar rules, guys. We had kind of inverted what we did in series to parallel. Nothing is different on this other than how to enter that into a calculator and understand that the current relationship has to be put in with the square root function for total for that to be consistent. Hopefully you got something out of that. There'll be another video on this through Zoom, and that'll be your part two. See you at the next video.